Today we're going to talk about uh, the sperm penetration assay and this, this short video will show you kind of the step-by-step -step procedures on how to um, do this test. Um, it should be accompanied with um, some literature we have that will give you all the equipment, materials needed, plus the step-by-step -step, um, uh, portions as you will see in this video. So um, we'll just get started here. Um, what we're using this for is to as another way to evaluate um, reproduction or evaluate fertility in breeder flocks. We can do this process using um, farm fresh or not farm fresh, but laid eggs, um, preferably cold eggs um, from a hatchery, um, wherever. They don't have to be fresh. They can be week, two weeks old, whatever. Um, so we use, take our, our laid eggs um, that are cooled and we'll separate the yolk and the albumin. And it's important to get all this albumin off. Um, the yolks and you'll see in the, the steps after this. Uh, so now we are placing that yolk uh, with the albumin removed on a um, paper towel, an industrial type paper towel, and we'll gently roll it on that paper towel as you see here until we find that germal disc and then what, what we're trying to do is get the albumin off of that germal disc area. So we can either roll it across the paper towel or gently dab that area over the germal disc. That's the area that we're most concerned with um, and then submerge the, the paper towels best if the whole paper towel gets wet submerge it in a sodium chloride solution you can read about that in the in the write-up but we'll let them soak in this um, five percent sodium chloride solution um, for at least five minutes um, typically what i'll do here is i'll have two three four six eggs in one um, solution and so as you put the last one in you're ready to take the first one out identify that germal disc as you see here, make sure the yolks are submerged all the way under the solution. So we get that salt solution helps get some of this albumin off. Um, once we find that dermal disc area, we'll make a little puncture away from that um, dermal disc. And we're going to cut off the paravitaline layer or paravitaline membrane that overlies that yolk. And again, we're looking at that area around that dermal disc, maybe a centimeter, a little more than a centimeter area. We just want enough that the germal disc is in the middle of that pervitaline layer um, piece that we cut so we have room to straighten it and, and as we get to that point. This section right here is actually very important. is cleaning that albumin off. Once you get that membrane off, it's pretty tough and sturdy. Um, most of the times when people do this, they don't do um, shake it enough, or they don't clean enough of the albumin off. As you see, I, I will shake it, release it, shake it, release it. You want it to look very clear. As you can see, the membrane here. Um, it's easiest to do this on a dark um, tabletop or background, the back of a mouse pad or something like that, or some some paper, or got Hobby Lobby will work, kind of a felt type paper. Um, you can see the membrane a little bit better so then we'll take once we get that membrane shake shaken off the albumin removed we'll, we'll reach in um, with a pair of forceps pull that out see how it's so thin and stringy so we've got most of that albumin off of that membrane place it on a uh, mi mi microscope slide typically I place two or three um, pieces on the same slide and then we gently tease it apart. Um, here I'm using uh, just regular needles. We, we have also uh, probes um, that we use as well. They're, they're made for this. But because we know where the germal is, right in the center, you see as I pull this membrane, or gently pull this membrane apart, the edges of it kind of a little bit folded, but that's okay. We have reagents, a Schiff's reagent, formalin reagent are the two that we that use. It. Other than the salt solution, this is really all we need. Um, and uh, the shifts is something that you'll have to buy, and there's a product number on the product sheet that we have. The formalin, most hatcheries or most people can get that. We'll take a couple drops of formalin, just enough to cover that membrane. You want the whole membrane covered in formalin. No magic number is how long it has to sit here on that, um, just enough to fix that membrane. Once it, uh, it's been on there just for a few seconds, really, we take the shift reagent and then drop it on the memory. Make sure we don't touch that uh, application, the eyedropper application device. We don't touch that membrane because if we touch it, then we're going to contaminate your shift reagent and then it'll all turn purple and then you kind of ruin the whole batch. So I use a small bottle of shifts each time that's been refrigerated and kept in a dark bottle, what it's supposed to be, and then you'll get a quick stain like we see here. So once it stains dark, and that's the other area, a lot of people don't let it stain dark enough. We want it to stain dark. 
So w once we drain off the fluid, kind of let the fluid drain off as much as you can, then at that point you can use these pipettes and drop a, a solution. You can use the, the sodium chloride solution or water, whatever you would like. I generally use the sodium chloride solution. And drain it off and make sure that membrane sticks to that slide. Let the, let the fluid drain off, then you can start dropping um, the, the clean solution on that slide. And then once we get all that drained off, we should have a clear prep like this. If we're seeing a lot of purple and dark around that, you probably didn't get enough yolk, the yolk off, left it some adhered, probably didn't get the albumin off, and it's gonna be difficult to see. The cover slip is not mandatory. You can actually count them without this. I like to, to apply a cover slip, not another slide, and then, as you saw, press down on that slip to push some bubbles out, maybe straighten it out a little bit more. And then at that point, we're ready to put on a microscope. Typically, I will start um, with a, I'll start with a 4x um, magnification to find that whole germinal disc area, and then you can go to a 10x um, after that. You can move around. Uh, it doesn't take a great microscope to do this, but this is what we should see. Um, the, each hole represents an area where a sperm has bound and penetrated that um, pervaline layer. So we're seeing light pass through that, that hole in this donut-shaped fashion. And then here we can look at the, um, as, a, as you've seen before, you can look at, you know, one with heavy penetration, a little one on the right with very little sperm penetration, but a couple of holes there. Um, and then from that point, we can then record them on our um, record them on our record sheet that you should have access to. And then what we want to do at that point then is really look at the distribution of um, where the holes lie as far as how many are in each category of the 0 to 10, 11 to 30, 31 to 60 percent. That data is what's going to really be most important to us as far as determining what is wrong with our flock. So this little video should tell you um, what or show you how we're doing this process. Um, the accompanying sheet with the materials and methods um, in order and also the equipment required um, should be should go with this in between the two of them. You should be able to know how to do this this test very well. And, um, and again, um, we hope you're able to use it for what um, you need to and what helps you with your operations.